the Granger County Jane Doe, identified as Brenda Clark. In this case, a young woman was found near the county line in Granger County, Tennessee. The sheriff's office was called to assist in investigating the discovery that was made by hunters in a wooded area near Dale Road in the Powder Springs section of Granger County on September 29, 1996. Unbeknownst to the sheriff's department, a young woman went missing that same year from Knoxville, Tennessee. Despite it being close to where the Jane Doe was found, they didn't match the missing person to the homicide. While they never disclosed her cause of death, they did say, based on evidence at the scene, that it wasn't natural. They believe she was 30 to 40 years old. As I've mentioned before, CODIS is the first place authorities check for a match. And in this case, in 2018, 22 years after she was found, they obtained a viable sample of her DNA through the University of North Texas Center for Identification. This university has been important in a number of Jane and John Doe cases. They submitted the results to CODIS, and while usually the DNA sits and waits for a hit, it wasn't the case here. There was an exact match to a still-living woman. It's unclear why it took so long, as they note it was matched in 2018, but it wasn't until August 13, 2022, that her identity was announced. It would eventually be announced that the reason there was a DNA match to a living person, she has an identical twin sister, and her sister's DNA was in the system. It's possible they had trouble locating her, and that's why it took so long for it to be announced. Or perhaps they thought there was some sort of a mistake. Brenda's sister would eventually say, Brenda disappeared in 1996 at the age of 38. Unfortunately, beyond the point that they know she has an identical twin, there was no other information released. So it's important that anyone who knew Brenda at that time, you might have information that's important. Please call the number on the screen. They need to speak to anyone who might be able to provide information on what was going on in her life at the time so they can investigate and find the person responsible. Brenda Clark went unidentified for 25 years. The False Bay, Australia, John Doe Identified as Mario De La Torre In this case, Mr. Mario De La Torre was an Italian immigrant who had arrived in Australia in the late 1930s, and he went by the name of Della. He was 54 when he disappeared. He had no children of his own, but he was close to his parents and his brother. And he was considered a good man who was loved by those around him. He started experiencing some troubles in his life, and he was described as having some pretty severe depression. He had tried to be proactive, and he was prescribed an antidepressant, but it hadn't been working, at least not yet. Then suddenly he disappeared in October of 1976. His family didn't hold out a lot of hope that he was still alive. He was not someone who would walk away from his life to just start again somewhere else. So there wasn't really any strong belief that he had survived. His family reached out to the media, begging them to help, but no leads were discovered. He was just missing. Then, on April 21, 1977, Della's remains would wash up on the beach near False Bay. False Bay is pretty close to where he had lived, and they always suspected that the remains belonged to the missing man. After an inquest in 1979, the current coroner released a statement saying he could not state with any certainty that they had found Della Torre. A cold case unit more recently began examining the remains that were found so long ago. They had been set aside, of course, in 1977 because DNA wasn't even an option. The constable didn't give up, though, and he referred the case to the National DNA Program, which offered more options than were currently available to use in South Australia. This came with an additional challenge. Della, like so many people of that time, had had all of his teeth pulled in favor of false teeth, so there was no teeth to obtain DNA from. They also couldn't compare any dental films. In addition to this challenge, not having any children made it harder to compare the DNA. However, they did have a strong belief that those bones belonged to Della, and he did still have a living brother. 
as well as a niece named Mercedes, who very much wanted to know what happened to her uncle. Not only were they successful in extracting DNA from those bones, they had had family DNA to compare it to, and now, finally, it came time to find out. This made those involved very hopeful so they could solve the mystery of who the man was that they discovered on that beach so long ago. While not as famous as the Somerton man, the remains that were found were pretty important to many people who lived in Australia. Australia has a lot less unidentified Jane and John Doe cases, but this makes the suspense and the pressure to close the case all that much greater. The senior constable was clear that this case mattered and that the National DNA Program offers a unique opportunity for the department to have new technology assist. And while so much hinged on the hope of a match, there was a backup plan to use the DNA to search sites like GEDmatch if this wasn't successful. However, it was. Mr. Mario Della Torre once again had his name. He went unidentified for 40 years. The Tucson John Doe, February 2019, identified as Tommy Gale Poole Jr. Tommy was found on February 26, 2019 in Tucson, Arizona, in an area where transient individuals often camped. It appears his cause of death was likely natural. They estimated him to be between 32 and 50, but this would turn out to be inaccurate. Otherwise, all they really knew was that he had gray hair, brown eyes, and a porcelain crown replacement for an upper tooth. The DNA Doe Project took this case, releasing Tommy's identity in August of 2022. They got lucky right away. They found two close relatives, as far as DNA matches, relating to Tommy. It would turn out both of those matches were his second cousins and they knew what member of their family was missing. It took less than 18 hours to solve this case and find his identity, which is extremely fast. Sometimes it can take months, and other times they wait years because they have to wait for more uploads to GEDmatch. It was with this that they learned the Tucson John Doe is in fact Tommy Poole Jr. from Virginia. We now know he was 61 years old at the time. He'd been living very close to where he was found less than two miles away, in a Tucson residence. In 2017, however, he was evicted and he would end up in an encampment where he was found. The thing that is so profoundly sad is that the only photo available of Tommy appears to be from an arrest of some kind, which isn't documented. And for that reason, it's my semi-educated guess, based on what I've seen in cases so far is that it was most likely some kind of petty crime, like public vagrancy. His remains have not been claimed, and they are waiting for family members to take responsibility. This man desperately needs someone to come forward. If you know somebody in Tommy's family that's missing him, please contact the authorities at the number given. Tommy Gale Poole, Jr. went unidentified for three years. The Tucson parking lot John Doe, 2019, identified as James Mark Chaparro. Mark was found near a shopping center parking lot in Tucson, Arizona, around December of 2019. They estimated him to be 40 to 65, with the prevailing theory of him going to the store and never coming home, and that no one reported him missing. It's not clear what his living situation was, but his family, for some reason, believed he'd been living in China, which is why no one reported him missing. It's possible he may have been homeless. They did find proof that he'd been evicted from a home in Tucson, Arizona, shortly before he was found. What's sad is, in this group of cases, I now have two Tucson John Does, found six months apart, who were both evicted from homes. The DNA Doe Project stepped in for both cases, identifying the two men in August of 2022. James went unidentified for three years. Thank you everybody for watching and listening. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't yet. Take care of yourselves and each other.